Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Open Strata this Wednesday night. Today we have a good show coming your way. Um, we're trying to talk about composition. Composition is a very important piece when it comes to photography. And so we're going to talk about composition and how to master it. We're going to talk about the rules, the tips, the tricks. Um, each one of us, the panel is going to take one tip, one trick, and we're going to share our thoughts on that trick. Um, share some example photos with you guys as well. And you guys can also leave your comments and stuff in the comments below, and we will read them from time to time. So I'm going to bring in the guests for today. Um, I know we're still waiting for a couple more people who will be here soon. So you right. see, we have Mix, we have Paul, we have Andre. Um, and I think Brian will be on his way. He's running a little bit late, but he'll be here soon. Um, yeah. So guys, welcome to this week's edition of Open Charter. Uh, let's do a roundtable, quick introduction, starting with Mix. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Salom. Uh, business name is Meek Photos, and um, I love photography. I'm happy to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny? Yeah, I've never heard you say that before. I, I, I thought you like money more. You know? yeah. Well, well, well like, it depends oh, on, the, on the time of day. <laughs> After the after the after the market closes, then you're back. Exactly, in exactly. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Oh, and please do well to subscribe to Meek Photos. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Paul. Uh, man. Uh, thanks everyone for jumping on with us this Wednesday. Uh, is it the last Wednesday of the month? No, next Wednesday is the last Wednesday of the month. I don't know what yeah. day it is. Anyway, La next Wednesday is, uh, is the last Wednesday of the month, and we're heading into April. That's crazy. And just so you guys know, this will be our first anniversary. Yeah. What are we doing for that? This month, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember we started in, in uh, March uh, last year, all right? So this we could should... be our, our, you know, one year we should, anniversary we should, show. We should have we should, a special show for that. We should, have, we should play the first show that we did. I, mean, I had no oh, idea what that I was, was horrible. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Not that I know much more now, but you know. Uh, thanks everyone for jumping on. Uh, good show. I think, comp I mean, um, I like composition. I think that's my skill set. So, um, you know, it's really just about, about paying attention to like details and trying to like challenge yourself to make a shot, even when you think there is no shot. I think that's what makes, that's what makes photography fun. And um, yeah, I think, we, I think we have some good examples to show you guys and hopefully take, take a couple of way couple of things away from this one and uh, yeah should be fun andre uh good evening everybody uh my name is andre vonigish uh photographer videographer i live in brampton i shoot everything from weddings to steel wool and smoke and special effects stuff with brian a lot so yeah. i'm just very passionate about photography and do it as much as i can he, awesome. Andre, awesome. Andre also loves photography. <laughs> A little <Yeah>. bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So as I said at the beginning, today we are talking about composition. We're going back to the basics. We're talking about, you know, beginner stuff. Yeah. Well, maybe not so beginner stuff. But these are the, the basics of understanding photography, the basics of taking better images. Um, we talk about exposure. We talk about the exposure triangle. We also talk about, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff but when it comes to getting that shot well balanced then you're talking about composition you're looking at how you are putting subjects and and other objects within the scene in, in various places within that frame right so mm -hmm. how you frame your shot what is inside the shot and all that stuff will end up making your shot looks better or look worse so we're looking at tips for us to be able to improve our images right um, we always talk about gear and how gear can help you improve, but like I always say, gear is not the most important thing. Gear is important, but it's not the most important thing. Understanding the concepts, understanding the skills will help you improve better. So today we're talking yep. on the topic composition, right? Um, so we're going to start off, and I think Andre is ready, so he's going to take off um, <laughs> and nice talk about... Um, Talk, uh, you know, when you're composing, how to figure out what is in your frame, right? Yeah. Paying attention to what is in your frame. Yeah. So Andre's going to talk about that, and then we'll have a quick discussion and move on from there. Nice. Yeah, so the whole thing about composition and what's in your frame, are you shooting landscape? Are you shooting a model, a car, 
cityscape. It could be anything, but you have to have that vision. Yep. Um, some of the things, I'm just going to get right into this. Some of the things that you should look for. Street signs. Yeah. Bright colors. Power lines. Mm -hmm. uh, a tree that's not in the right place. Uh, just distracting things that are actually going to take away from the shot. Some things are easy enough taken out in Photoshop, but some things it's as easy as just moving two steps to the right, two steps to the left, mm -hmm. and it's going to be out of your shot. So always be aware of that. Um, hello, Brian. Hey, Brian. Hello, hello. So, how's everybody? Welcome. Good, welcome. Stop! It's the hunger, the hung, the, the hunger games of uh, <laughs> composition, I guess. So no, I'm right. gonna share an image. If I know how to do this. Share screen? Yes. No, I want this. Do you guys see the photo? Um, I don't see your screen here yet. Got to click the window. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Newbie. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Fire the new guy. I know. So, like, with this, with this, uh, you see that white sign, which is very distracting. All I would have had to do was move over a couple feet, and... Uh, you know, it wouldn't be in the shot. But sometimes it's more important just to get the shot because the lighting just looks right. That wind just blows the hair just right. Take the shot. And that to take out in Photoshop is very simple. So it's a sometimes play it by ear thing. But if you sometimes just have to get the shot, take it and worry about it after. But Mm -hmm. In my in my defense, I took this in twenty. I had to look it up. I took this in twenty twelve. Oh, wow. uh, okay. so, Ten years ago. So I was just starting out. I was shooting with lots of different models just to get experience. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of things I didn't know. <laughs> so <laughs> I love it. So yeah, uh, that's it. that's one shot. Let me open up. Oh yeah, I know what Sorry. matrix. The matrix. Blah, blah. I know I'm new. Now, this is also, this is from 20, early 2013. Now, if I knew how to edit back then, mm -hmm. you see that little uh, line in the middle of her head coming out? <laughs> that's, a, that's a cell tower. I know that now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, there again, if I would have moved over a little bit or had her move over a little bit, it wouldn't have been right to the top of her yeah. head. Where is it? Uh, that's up in Caledon. Uh, I know exactly where that oh, is. I recognize that fence. I know that, exactly that fence where that is. That fence you shot in the uh, one, Well, not exactly, but that's Boston Mills Road. Yep. Just by Mississauga Road. It's right. a great so, spot. Now, if I would have done that now, I would have seen that and taken it out in Photoshop. Bing, bing, yeah. no, no biggie. Yeah. But yeah, in my defense, I didn't know how to edit back then. So, yeah, no worries. Um, but sometimes, uh, sometimes all it <laughs> takes is cropping. Yep. So you go from that. That's the shot I took. I know I'm new at this. To go to that, I just yep. tighten up the crop Boom. a bit, and that uh, distracting sign goes away. Yeah, that's all it takes. Nowadays, I probably would have taken out that little flower. Yeah. Uh, maybe just positioned her differently. Yeah. But other than that, sometimes all it takes is cropping the shot a little bit different and saves yourself a lot of edit time. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, sometimes you just have to take the shot to get it. Because this was just before sunset, so the light was really nice. Uh, but there again, I took this back in 2012. Uh, yeah, man. My editing wasn't my strong suit back then. 
<laughs> Sometimes all it takes is a nice little crop, and that's it. So, yeah. Awesome. Paint, so paint guys, um, detail. Close, close, close. <laughs> the Matrix. You, oh, my God. I'm so yeah. glad. <laughs> all right. So, guys, what do you guys want to share anything about um, paying attention to what's in your frame? Um, all I want to say, like Andre said at the beginning, um, when I also started, I, I also had that issue of um, taking images where you're not really paying attention to what's be in your background, especially. Mm -hmm. um, so you end up having trees sticking out from the head of people <laughs> um, and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. Um, so those, those are the kind of things that you need to look out for because when you have buildings and trees and stuff sticking out from the heads of people, it tends to be very distracting. And so when people are looking at that image, instead of focusing on the main subject, their eyes are wandering all around because they see the buildings taking out of people's heads and, and other stuff like that, right? So the, those are one of some of the stuff I think you should look out for when you're shooting. The, the signs the, and the roads and stuff like that. Two more quick things. When you're shooting people, oh. uh, bra straps and tags. Mm -hmm. If you see yeah. them, ask the model to hide it. Uh, if you see a tag out, hide it, cut it off, do something. Uh, hair ties. Get... Hair ties mm -hmm. are the worst. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I know, just simple things like that. If you've, you've got to train yourself to get there. Uh, I miss so much when I look back at my old photos, but you learn and you just have to... Uh, it's sometimes as easy as telling the model, hey, can you just push that strap underneath the, the dress strap? It hides it. You don't have to take anything out. It's done. Yeah. So there you go. That's my two cents. <laughs> is it, Kim, else, has a question. Uh, Kim has a question. Is it bad to turn down the exposure on a sign if you're not strong on oh. Photoshop? Depends where the sign is, I guess. Yeah. Like if it's yeah, at the corner, I, I, you can get it, maybe. It, it depends on, on, on what the sign is, right? So if the sign is your main subject, then yes, you want to make sure that it's highlighted so you can tone out this exposure and make sure it's it's visible. But if the sign is just in the background or it's a distracting element, mm -hmm. then I would say frame your image in a way that you can take it out if you can or try to take it out in post. Uh, most of the time, I think as photographers, we tend to leave too much stuff for post, right? Whereas we can actually maybe fix it right there and save ourselves uh, another maybe five minutes of Photoshop at work. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Hello, Jim. Welcome to the show. Hey, Jim. Thanks for jumping on. <laughs> All right, guys. Anything else before we move on to the next... One. Good stuff, Andre. Thank you. Really good. I love the I love the details. All right, Mr. Brian, are you right? Are you are you ready? He's getting ready. He's talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> He's on mute. <laughs> are we doing Are we doing all photos, or are we just like I know Andre did all of his, but are we doing all of them at once, or are we just kind of going around the table like until we're no? Because you're doing we're doing the each 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 yeah each each technique at once, so you can show all, right. all the images here for that technique that we move on all to. Right. All right. And if you want to go to rule of thirds, I because that's what I want, or I took off yep. rule of thirds. So if you want to do that, I mean, I've got one photo ready to go that that might clash a bit with with what Meek is going to talk about, but. All right, that's good. All right, so let's talk about rule of thirds. <laughs> okay. So the rule of thirds is basically, and I don't have a graphical representation that I can show you, but you basically you draw lines across your frame, make boxes, and you put your interesting points where those lines intersect. And that just naturally draws the eye to those areas. And most so, like cameras and phones have, have that, like have the, yeah, the, the grid overlay. Yeah. So, so you don't have to like guess. It makes it easy. But once once yeah. you're used to doing it, it, you just see it anyway. And I can, if I share a photo here, just from this past weekend. Hmm. Oh, so if, anyone, if anyone follows me on 
uh, Twitter. You probably already saw this one today. Oh, yeah. Oh, they did the person. The people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can go. see the people are kind of at, at one of the third junctions in the bottom left-hand corner. But then you've got the cityscapes of in the top right-hand corner in the background. So it just mm -hmm. the, using the two Bounce. opposing thirds as a diagonal, it just draws your eye right through the frame. And uh, I know Meek is going to talk about depth later. So this this is also an example of that, just getting that depth to your shot. So sorry to, to step on you a bit there, Meek, but it, it was the rule of third shot I had ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Meeks, Meeks, Meeks was actually going to show the exact same picture. Oh. oh, he took it too? All right. Yeah, he took it too. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So no, the rule of thirds is very simple, and I mean, as as with all rules, though you you can break it, uh, you just have to use the right circumstances to yeah. break it. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's more a suggestion than a rule, but it works yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah, understand the rule and then break it. Yeah, I love doing I, that. I, I love like breaking, breaking rules. It. <laughs> uh, so, breaking rules is fun. I love that. <laughs> People get so mad at me sometimes. I know, right? You you always have to know the rules first before you yeah. begin to start to break them, right? Yeah. Um, and rules of thirds is, is very is very, you know, one of those concepts that you need to grasp earlier on as a photographer, because um, it adds a little a, lo a lot more kind of balance to your whole image, right? Um, yeah. And and so if you look at a thumbnail. Maybe I can share that image I used for the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. You could see I had that grid bars on that. Yeah, you actually put the grid bars on that one. Grid right. bars on that one. And if if you if you are not if you shoot an image right and you don't put that uh, rule of thirds in there, when you come into your edit and shoot, you see that when you go to the cropping tool, you also have that rule of thirds here, right here in the cropping, mm -hmm. right to guide you to crop that image properly and as you can see i placed the cowboy right here along that intersection of that points right there um and that's that's what you you try to aim for when you're looking at the, the rule of third stuff uh placing objects and subjects inside one of these four corners here um trying to get that attention to them kind of draws your eyes in naturally yeah i, I queued up another one that is going to step on whoever's talking leading lines too, but yeah. <laughs> oh, but it's uh, that's actually from Ontario Place, uh, yeah. the abandoned log ride. And uh, so basically, if you go to the bottom right, you've got the foreground, and then top left, you've got the background, and it just and the lines draw your eye right through the frame on a shot like that. And it yeah. was a really cool explore too. So yeah, there's that bonus. Check out the YouTube video, link on bio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so as you guys can see, as we're going along, right, these um, techniques and rules are not isolated. Yeah. Right? They all come together. You can mix them in in the same one simple image, right? So, yeah. like some of the examples that um, Brian just shared, you have depth, you have rule of thirds in there, right? You also have leading lights in there. Um, so. These, as we are talking about, these don't see them as individual things that stands on their own. All of these can be put together um, in one simple image and, and make that image more powerful in a yeah. certain way. Right. Cool. Yeah. All right. So let's move on. Yeah. Right. Or do you guys have anything to us to share on rule of thirds before we move on to the next? Oh, maybe I can share one where I actually broke it. Nice. Okay. nice. And I actually I threw the subject right in the middle of the frame. Share that tab here, and this is actually out with uh, Evans and Andre one night, and we had a special guest come out and hang out with us for a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and I put a there great go. smack dab in the middle. That's just because I thought it worked with him in the middle on a shot like that, just with the darkness around him. Yeah. I wanted him surrounded by the darkness. So. Right, and the and the way the the background is, yeah. the way the brick is, this image, you know, when you have that touches a bit on the symmetry too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. I I break it a lot, probably way too much, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like anything, you you can break it. Right. 
Yeah. Usually when I'm taking a uh, portrait in portrait mode, I hardly go with the rule of thirds if it's a close up portrait. But if it's a portrait in the landscape mode, then it affords me uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Awesome. Tony right. rules and bones. Both are meant to be broken. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you're right, Tony. <laughs> All right. Anything All right. else on rule of thirds? Quite Nothing once. at the moment. Nothing at the moment, but we're we're going through. Yeah, so now we move on to uh, leading uh, leading lines and symmetry. Is that me? That's yep, Paul's going to lead, lead us in that one. Oh, boy. Got it, got up us all. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay, anyone, yeah. who, anyone who's watched Paul ever knows he loves leading lines. So I love... <laughs> I, I think Paul mentions leading lines in almost they're, every... They're everywhere. Well, because they're everywhere. Everywhere. That's why. They're everywhere. I'm... I'm surprised everywhere. you don't carry a pencil and just hold it out in front of you and say, look, it's a leading line. <laughs> That's a great idea. For... <laughs> That's a great idea for the next video. To be honest with you. There we go. Oh, there we go. Thank that one. I think, uh, I think Tony has a question before Maybe. we move on. Said, Would it be fair to say rules of composition only apply to certain types of photography? Example, a sports photographer may have no choice if he or she is shooting a certain spot if you look um, at the top sports photos they're yep. still going to have composition yep so it's, the composition it's rules is not yeah it's not it's not related to any specific general i think it's it applies in every type of photos that you're taking even and, in landscape right and yeah, i our, believe it shouldn't always be in the shot uh it can always be in the crop the, the i mean cropping is is part of the the uh the whole process so yeah, if you are sometimes unsure, you just have to do it. Yeah. Right. If you're not sure, you have a fast moving object, just shoot wide enough that you'll be able to crop however you want to crop. So yeah. Yeah. And I think uh sports photographers do crop heavily, right? Um they, they do crop a lot. So spray and pray. <laughs> spray and pray, man. They're on burst mode, man, for like for like the whole game. They're just trying to get one shot. There's a reason they're shooting like 30 frames a second. Yeah, yep. exactly. Exactly. Now they may they may be focusing on a certain player, you know. They may be trying yeah. to get a moment, right? It's all about trying to get the moment. You're just trying to get a moment, and that's where that that's where that's 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 where the challenge is. That I, I think. I'm trying to get a moment too, but they keep delaying my shipment. Oh, the oh, moment! The moment! <laughs> Good one! The moment! The moment. Uh, you. <laughs> the moment is not sponsoring today's broadcast. No. No. <laughs> You know, hardiness. Well, two days ago, they said to me, "Yeah, yeah, it's still shipping on March 31st." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Today, today or yesterday, I got an email saying, "Oh no, it's been delayed to April 9th now." Yeah, oh. 20, 2022. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> that hurts. Yeah, what are they blaming COVID? Yeah. yeah, if I didn't want the thing so bad, I would have canceled the order. But I really want the thing. So, and do you want to do you want to tell the thing to the to to our audience? Yeah, it's just the uh, twenty percent Cinebloom filter. What are you going to? What are you going to use that for? Video. Nice. Just. Yeah. Create I've been it. I've been create looking at getting one of those, um, the Pro Mist filters. Okay, check out the the Moment yeah. ones. It's the Moment look to me. I like the look of the Moment one better over the Pro Mist, but I mean it's a, it's a personal, personal yeah. taste, right? Yeah. yeah. I canceled yeah. my order. <laughs> the same thing the same filter yeah they sent me an email back in like uh beginning of january or something and said if you want to cancel feel free because it's going to be like way i'm like cancel <laughs> uh, yeah. crazy man what kind of I'm business are, what kind of business are they yeah. right i know usually they're very good but uh, uh I think it's just that maybe a lot of people have pre-ordered that, so they have yeah. a hard time keeping up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, when you get the filter, you should do a product review, Brian. I will. And just I say, will. "Hey, moment, thanks for uh, shipping this to me uh, eight, eight, eight years later." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. All right. So, Paul, let's talk about. Um, Let's. Let's do it. Leading think, lines and symmetry. Did I share my screen. Yeah, I did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I see your screen here, but I see the matrix as well. Yeah. Um, 
I'm still here, don't worry. I'm just looking for something. Oh. Sorry, I'm just going, I went back. All right. <coughs> Uh, okay. I don't have a fancy fade button like Evan, so I got to do it manually. <laughs> you guys have this one? <laughs> yep. Okay. So this was taken at Woodbine 20 last year, just before the lockdown. Um, so I typically show this photo to like when I do like my um, Lightroom class, just want to kind of show people composition because this is not the photo that I actually want to like show on like symmetry. But I think this photo really shows the example of why you should always move around when shooting and you always want to look up because you can get this photo. Much nicer. Right? Yeah. So that, you know, that's why you always need to pay attention <coughs> to like what's around you and like obviously like lines and stuff. And um, I think it works, right? So I always tell people look up because you know we typically don't look up, and there could be really good shots to be had. So I always show this photo to people because I think it's a I think it's a good example of just like symmetry, and obviously like the red and the sky and all that stuff kind of works together too. But um, I still like this photo even like a year and a half later. Yeah, that's, that one actually touches on colors. Color yeah, theory. and colors too. Yep. Yeah, a exactly. compositional aid. Yeah. So this one was taken uh, right beside the Sky Dome. And so it kind of touches on rule of thirds, but more so like the symmetry with like um, the pathway here. And you have this kind of like line, like a V, upside down V. And I intentionally waited for this person to like get past the middle because I didn't want the person to be right in the middle. I wanted the person to be like at the left side of the frame. So that's again, touches on rule of thirds. But again, this is how you can frame people using just glass and like window panes. And it makes for a more interesting photo instead of just shooting them like dead on. Uh, I have a similar example. I don't know where I put it. It's over. Well, we can do the Massey Hall one too. This is at Massey Hall, doors open, oh, right? Cool. So yeah, this is like, I don't know, 2018 or something. Um, but again, I'm up and I'm looking down and you're seeing the symmetry of the chairs Right, it kind of gives like a vibe to it. Um, and you know, I mean, there's no one there. I mean, I, I always thought maybe this photo would be different with someone sitting, but I think it's kind of cool with like no one's like no one there. It's also kind of like foreshadowing of like lockdown too. Um, yeah, I'm up and I'm looking down. So it, it, you know, you just use the chairs to like work for symmetry and I don't know, it's like a pleasant image to look at and your eye kind of goes through the frame. And that's another way of using um, symmetry to your advantage. Uh, I want to do leading lines real quick. Okay. This one I always show too, because like every road has a yellow line, right? So you don't want to like shoot the road at eye level. You need to like get basically on the road and you want to get the line like flush, like flush to the ground. And it just creates a better perspective instead of shooting from eye level because you kind of lose, you kind of like lose that angle. Yeah, no, and they're everywhere. Definitely helps. Yeah, you need to get low. Like you need to get low. Like, I don't know. Eye level doesn't really do it for me. You need to get like low. Obviously, you, have you need to get low not, and look crazy. Yeah, basically. And not, yeah. Get, and not get, and not get, and not get, and not get hit by a car, right? So, um, but yeah, definitely get low for sure. And use it in and, Toronto and have people offer you money because they think you're homeless. Yeah, <laughs> that's happened. <laughs> that's happened. Yeah, it's uh, legit happened. Yeah, it's legit happened. But you know, road like lanes are obviously everywhere, and you can you can use them. Uh, what else do I have? 
Oh yeah, buildings. Again, look up, right? This is in the financial district, right? And you just have to look up. Instead of like shooting this building from further away, you gotta, I should have really even went closer, but get closer to the building and look up and then you can use, you can use the building's art, like architecture to your advantage and you get more of like a symmetry feel to it. Now, if I went closer to the building and got like the middle of the building flush, I could have used the middle as like a leading line all the way to like the top. But it's like the RBC building or whatever it is. It's the black one. I don't know. Oh, the black called. one. Okay. The big black one. Yeah. Um, but when you're like when you're shooting architecture, to me, like you want to get really close. Like I don't know, you're shooting further away, you kind of lose like the design. So typically, when I shoot architecture, you want to get, get as close as possible. As hospital, get as close as possible, and um, I think you just get a different feel for it. Um, I don't know. I probably have other stuff, but I can stop. <laughs> but that's like my intro to composition, <laughs> leading lines and symmetry. But awesome. it comes with practice, right? Like the more that you do it, like the more that you just see it, right? Like it's hard yeah. for someone that just started to see stuff like that. But like the more that you practice, <laughs> the more you're just going to automatically see stuff. Yep. Um, like everything in photography, I think practice, practice, practice all the time. Um, there are times where I step out of the house and my goal is just to practice. Um, yeah. I have my favorite spot. Uh, <laughs> Brian and, and, and Andre know that place. Yeah. And that's my practice spot. So whenever I'm bored, I can go out there and I have a million photos of that place. I may never share uh, most of them, but it's yeah. my practice workflow. So I go there. I pick one concept for that day, and all I do is just practice that concept. The picture may not turn out good. I may not share it on Instagram, but it helps me build that process of working and, and perfecting um, that particular technique, right? Yeah. Um, I, I know Paul spoke about going down low. Um, that's another also one composition technique you can also learn, and, and it com all comes with angles. So what angle are you shooting from? camera angles right uh, that can also help your composition in 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 certain aspects so symmetry leading lines are everywhere and make use of them everywhere everywhere totally right. is it my turn it's your turn buddy all right well, if we if nobody else is sharing anything on symmetry leading lines then uh, go ahead i can find some of stuff to, yeah go ahead mix to mix we're talking about depth okay depth. yeah depth all right, so uh, you guys pretty much uh, said almost everything I'm going to say now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just trying to read out that, you know, perspective, leading lines, all actually go ahead and create depth, you know. Um, so when, when you are uh, taking a picture, um, you want to have a point of focus. So everything else should kind of like lead the eye to that point of focus. And they are so many ways to create uh, depth in a picture. Uh, you can use leading lines. I'm sure this has been said several times already. Um, you know, find natural leading lines, or you could even use artificial ones if you are in an urban setting, okay? Uh, also, you can use perspective uh, to create depth, and it doesn't matter what f-stop you are shooting at if you get the correct leading lines and perspectives, you can create depth with F16. So don't think that with depth, you always just need a very shallow depth of field camera and then you, you'll be good, even though I do that most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, next you should think about your picture as a whole. Think about the foreground of your picture. Think about the middle ground and the background. Usually you want the main subject to be the middle ground usually but depends on what you are going for i've seen a picture on instagram that was taken at the beach uh so close to the sand the uh, the marbles in the sand were the focus and they were in the foreground and they were just so beautiful and it kind of like slowly faded out into the sunset so uh it's not a stiff rule you just you just gotta know when to use what okay uh, you could use selective focus, uh, which is, you know, sometimes in certain situations, you need to manually focus if you have so much going on um, and you are trying to focus on a subject that has 
a very distracting foreground. You know, you need to just turn everything off and manually, you know, do the <laughs> the, the tune-in and, and get the focus spot on where you want. Um, so uh, also you can use color to portray depth in a photo. Uh, so maybe uh, lighter colors in front and the back and the more concentrated color should be your subject. And that would uh, make the depth perception, you know, more real. And finally, my favorite of all, you can use light, okay? Yeah. Uh, you can use light uh, to perceive depth in a, a photo. So I wasn't going to share a picture, but since these uh, high-speed individuals <laughs> shared a bunch of pictures. Share photos, share photos. <laughs> Show, don't tell. Show, don't tell. Let me uh, share a few. Okay, I'm going to share my screen here. Share screen. Okay, I'm sharing. Right. Beauty. All right. So for this picture, um, I mean, it was a little intense, but <laughs> I was trying to shoot through the uh, the grass, the, the the leaves, and when the leaves are very close to the camera, and you are shooting at a shallow depth of field, it pretty much just blurs into a color. So some portrait photographers actually just, uh, you know, they see the the subject wearing purple, and then they, they will just plug like a purple leaf and put it right next to the lens and create mm -hmm. this kind of, you know, purple haze in the shot and stuff like that. So you have to take note of that. If it's too close, you're gonna get a lot of th this haze. Sometimes it could be too much. Sometimes it could be just enough, but this just makes it look like a three-dimensional picture that the brain can work yeah. around. Great shot. Okay, so for this other one, I use light. I use light to make the depth more, um, you know, to, to make it more 3D like. Okay. So there definitely was a, a very strong backlight and a softer um, front light, you know, on the face. Uh, that way it softens up the face a little bit. So, um, yeah, light. Use light. Off camera flash. And oh, my favorite little guy. <laughs> well, I, don't know, I don't know how this picture yeah. ended up here, but well, we'll talk about it anyway. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> so that's cool. again, again, you can see that um, I, I pulled him away from this background. And this picture was actually shot in either F4 or, or F5.6. I know this because this was for a website and I wasn't going to shoot F1.8 for a website. <laughs> so... Even though I moved my way from the wall, you can see that it's blurred out ever so slightly. And um, probably if I'm to do this again, I might actually move this jar a little closer to the camera uh, just to create a little bit more depth in the picture overall. I like the use of green. <laughs> Thank I you. Guess, <laughs> I like the use of green. Is it actually, what is, is it green beans? What is it? No, Asparagus? it's uh, the, peas. Peas, is the sweet peas. Is it sweet Sugar peas? Snap. Yes, sugar, sugar snap, snap, sugar snap peas. Yeah, it's oh, okay. it's good to eat like that. Green, it's very sweet. Yeah, sugar right. snap peas. Mm -hmm. They were trying to promote it and make the uh, kids um, eat it. So, uh, <laughs> oh, he seems like he's enjoying it. Oh, hold on. Now I got to share another one. Hold on. A okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you, you have to see him enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Okay, um, share screen again. Oh, then here we go. All right, now get ready. I'll share with you. This is one, right? Mm. Now, mm. check this one out. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> loving the loves the camera. He loves the camera, man. He, he was just having camera. a blast. <laughs> That's I'm sure, awesome. I'm sure he convinced all the kids there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. Awesome, man. awesome. All right, so there we go, guys. Anybody uh, want to share any thoughts on creating death in your image? Can I can I share a photo? Yes, you can. <laughs> share. Yeah, yeah. Share, share, share. Oh, wrong one. Here we go. Ooh. So basically, you're using a uh, rule of thirds is kind of out the window here because I have the car right in the middle. 
Huh? But you got the leading lines. You've got yeah. light, kind of uh, putting that spotlight on that car. You know, darkening out the sides. Kind right, of you're putting the hey, your car, Andre. Yeah, yeah. I shoot my car a lot. That's good. Yeah. And then, is that one I took, or is that one you took? No, that was taken with the drone, actually. Yeah, I, I remember taking some with my drone under Bramley City Center. Of your yeah, truck. you were there, but yeah, uh, <laughs> this is a this is a just a simple bridge up in Caledon, and me getting lower and off to the side of it using those guardrails. That's kind of your leading lines into the car. So, another little example: mm -hmm. use what's there and uh, use it to your advantage. Hundred percent. Awesome. I also believe that when you are creating that, um, having stuff in front of your camera um, or closer to the lens than the subject that you're focusing on can add some real beautiful depth to your image. Um, so that's why. Fantastic. Yep, and that's why we have people that uses the prisms and the stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what they're just trying to do is use that prism uh, close to the lens just to give a little bit more of a depth, right, to, to your images. Because your, your pictures are, you know, two-dimensional, flat. So you want to make sure you put in something that will make it more like a two-dimensional or three-dimensional kind of image. Um, and adding stuff in front and behind kind of helps create that vibe for the image. Yeah, just I'm going to share. This is an old Peter Pan theme shoot that I did. And we use sort of give her the look of hiding in the forest hmm. and the backlit yeah. leaves in the foreground. Foreground, yep. Yeah. But the sun was behind her, so it actually backlit her, it backlit the leaves. It was just really nice. It was actually three degrees and she was wearing that outfit. So Yeah. Hmm. So so that's what I was saying. See how the uh, the leaves in the front, the leaves in the back, the backlight lit of the hair kind of makes me almost looks like it's a three D image. Mm -hmm. Right. Beautiful. That was a fun shoe. I think Paul is also trying to yeah, share something. I was, yeah, I was going to share a similar type of approach. You guys have this one? Yep. There we go. So... Okay. This is taken basically across from Roy Thompson Hall. And I always try to get different shots of the CN Tower because, you know, it's a CN Tower. So this this is basically using, well, probably use my zoom lens on this one. Yeah, 100, 150. And, you know, there was like a tree there and I just basically went basically against the leaves and it just created like a frame, kind of frames the tower, right? So just using, again, like what's what's available to you to make something just different instead of just shooting it kind of like dead on. Another example of using uh, symmetry is this this pathway here. Besides, um, this is the way to um, the train to Pearson. This is a great spot to get like just people watching. And this one guy was just like, he was honestly staring out this window for like 10 minutes. I don't know what he was doing. But I was just basically like snapping a bunch of photos of this dude. And uh, you can just use, again, the window paints to frame them and you got the traffic outside and I don't know, makes it kind of, I don't know, makes it kind of like lonely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, pay attention to who's around you and like what they're doing because you, you get some cool stuff sometimes. Okay, I think Jim has a question. Says that using the live view contributes to good composition. That's... Um, Mm -hmm. Anybody want to comment on that? Because this, this topic has come up so many times and it's been a controversial uh, thing where people say if you use the back of the screen, you're not a professional. Well, you got to look it through the viewfinder. I have, <laughs> I have one thing to say. If you, if you want to save your back, use the live mm -hmm. view. Use the live view. I think people are so stuck in their ways, you know. Yeah, uh, old school yep. photographers who are like, oh, you got to put your eye. Sometimes you want to get those cool shots at a wedding. But you don't want to be the photographer that is drawing all the attention, you know, during a wedding day, belly flopping, 
trust me i've done it before <laughs> i don't do it anymore <laughs> you know uh, on the floor laying down and trying to do all that when, when you can just uh tilt your screen if you have a tilt screen if you have a, a good nikon mirrorless you know you just tilt your screen <laughs> bend down screen. a little bit <laughs> and then there yeah. you go you get a shot you know save your back yeah. I I use my my um view um what do you call it the back of my screen uh, back screen a, lo a lot more these days. Um I don't know most of the time I'm not really looking through my viewfinder unless it's really I use my funny viewfinder outside. more when I'm using like my 100 to 400. So a long mm -hmm. telephoto I find it just helps stabilize it using the mm -hmm. viewfinder. Correct. But, but otherwise I mean I was like I was walking around Toronto shooting from the hip on the weekend, right? I wasn't even bringing my camera up to my eyes. I was just keeping it down low and just taking shots on the street, street cars and hey, stuff boss. like that. Boss. And and the advantage of, of using the viewfinder is that you can actually see a lot more. Yeah. If you're using the viewfinder, you can see a lot more of what's happening. And yep. you can selectively, you know, decide on what to shoot, what not to shoot. So yeah and i feel like you see a lot more not just what is in the frame but what is also outside of the frame right mm -hmm. um because you're looking not your one eye is not closed like you're going through the thing and you're closing one eye you have your eyes open you see what is in frame what is out of frame and then you can decide on what you want to bring in or what you want to keep out i think it's a lot more better um the only thing though that i'll say is that i'll caution people when you're using the back of your the back screen is make sure you know how well that back screen represents what you're going to get, right? Uh, I use the A7 III, and I have a problem with that because my w the back screen is not too accurate. And so if you're using that, you you should understand how that camera works and how that back screen works. So you know how your to compensate on screen. For, for, yeah, for your exposure. Use your histogram or, or yeah, you know, keep the histogram you get used screen. to it. Yeah. 100%. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you the shot, use whatever gets you the shot. There is no right or wrong way. So I just shared a shot and it's a little bit off topic, but I just found out that this shot won first place for the 4-H Ontario sparkler competition. Oh yeah. Congrats. Nice. Very nice. Just, nice. Now, just now. So they just told nice. you now. Yeah. Wow, congrats. Beautiful. So what was this taken? Park, this was taken on the Brampton Fairgrounds. So it's a bunch of 4-H yeah. members on the ground with sparklers. And right. then in the fire truck bucket is the mayor of Caledon and oh, the head okay. of Caledon Fire Department. Cool. Wow. Well, congrats. So I don't Wait, get were anything you shooting for from, what, other than... How, were you shooting from above something? What were you in? Drone. Oh, drone. Oh, the drone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! No, yeah, I can yeah. fly. I can fly. Yeah, <laughs> cool, man. It's my secret. My secret. I fly. <laughs> I drink All red right. bull. <laughs> yeah, that's so, a little bit one. off topic. I just found out just right now. So nice. Congrats, I don't get anything man. for it, but other than to say, wow. yeah, I won. Bragging rights. Yeah, bragging. Hey. Rights. It's all good, you know. Make a trophy for yourself. Make a trophy, Brian. <laughs> do a YouTube video. You know what you should do? You should do a YouTube video about that photo. I should. Exactly. I'll say this I'll is buy a coffee. Is Thanks, man. No problem. Coffee's a good trophy. Coffee's a good trophy. That's my kind of that's yeah. my kind of trophy. So next next Cheers. composition skill we are talking about is um fill in the frame. Mm. Right. And I think this one is uh maybe the easiest to do right <laughs> because you're not really thinking too much about it all you're doing is just filling the frame you want to get close as close as you can um and have more of your subject in the frame than everything else so you're getting rid of all um, a lot of negative space you're getting rid of all the other stuff that is distracting and you're focusing on your subject and having the subject bigger and larger in the frame um how close you get and how how much you feel the frame, I think it depends on you, right? Some people will like to go close, close, that you can only see the eyeball. That's their way of filling the frame. Some people will also go as close as they would like to, but still have a little bit of space around, uh, which is also good, right? You can go as much as you can, but in this case, you're not looking at putting a subject on the side or on the lower third 
um, or on the rule of third rule, you're not looking at leading lines. All you're looking at is the subject and you want the subject as big as possible within the frame. So let me share a couple of examples um, of shots that I have taken where I fill the frame. So if you look at this shot here. Great shot. Um, yeah, so you can see there's a little bit of depth, right? And that's because I was shooting through a little tiny um, kind of fence in front of her, hmm. right? And so you can see those are creating that black lines on her face. Um, but I, I was close enough just to get a headshot filling the whole frame with her. Um, there are other examples that I have where I don't fill the frame as much because I leave a little bit of room on the sides. Mm -hmm. um, but yep. like this shot here, um, I'm still filling the frame to a certain extent, but I have a little bit of space around it, right? With this, if you want to, you can go in tighter. You can just go and just closer to just the, the head or just the eyes um, and you can go in closer and fill the frame right so filling the frame it's it's all up to your imagination of what you oh, want to shot. do right nice. this one here i shot at an event nice. um i filled the frame with the subject but i still have a little bit of room around him Mm. Right, but I'm not going for that lower third or leading lines or anything. I'm just filling the frame with the subject. But you can still see that you have a little bit of depth because those lights and stuff on the table creates a little bit of depth behind the subject. Right, so, um, so many different. Oh, what did I skip? Some of them. Yeah, right here. This one too. Another one. Mm. Uh, this one a little bit more closer to. Rule of thirds a little bit, but not so much, right? Um, I wanted to have her a lot more in the shot. Um, and you have a little bit of these lines in here kind of <laughs> leading into her a little bit more, but trying to fill up that frame. This one too, same thing. Fill out the frame, have the subject bigger in the frame. Um, yeah. A little bit of that space around, around her. This one, similar thing, right? So... There are times where you can have your subject be dominant in the frame, uh, fill that space. You have the 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 large, you know, <laughs> sensor. Make use of that sensor, fill it out, and and that can also come across really good sometimes. And most of the time, it works. Would you well. would you also say then pay attention to your background then? Right, pay attention right. to your background, right? right. Because even though you are filling the frame you also at least want to have some of the other compositional elements in there, yeah. whether it be depth, um, you know, which you can create with bokeh, as you can see here. Uh, but you can also have leading lines in the background filling the frame. You can have a lot of other stuff that you can add into that same frame um, to give it some kind of depth in the background, but still fill the frame. Yeah, I think it just makes, I think it makes the shoot a little bit more fun a little bit more challenging too if you actually try to get something cool in the background as well as what you're as well as the focus point of your image i think uh i think it's neat yep so we don't always have to look for that leading lines the uh, or the lower thirds or you know yeah. putting people in the corner and leaving that space around uh you can eliminate that space don't forget that that space on its own also is a compositional element that you can yeah. use right uh but you can also fill the frame when you need to fill that frame fill the frame <laughs> yep our sponsor <laughs> Ooh, fancy filling the frame fancy the Man, frame. this this guy nice. looks angry this guy looks angry eh? <laughs> nice uh, when we can actually get a trip down to canadian raptor conservancy you uh, get shots like that all day buddy well, that's nice that'll be a 2021 meetup for sure yeah, guys, yeah. Can, can you believe I went to the zoo uh, a week ago uh, with the kids and I did not take a single picture? That's unbelievable. Mm, man. Well, you're all crypto now, man. How, was, how do you I was, go out I without a filming. camera? My, my, no, I did. I went with a camera, but my son wanted to make a video for his YouTube. So uh, I was filming and I completely <laughs> forgot to snap pictures of all these wow. beautiful birds and, you know. Oh, no. And wow. animals or something. What are you doing? B roll for him? What are you doing? 
Well, yeah, just <laughs> pictures him talking about all the animals and how excited yeah. he was seeing a go oh, a gorilla in person. We saw a rhino in person. You know, it's pretty nice. cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's another, <laughs> another bald eagle filling the frame shot. Bam. Throw it up. There we go. Oh, jeez. <laughs> nice. The eye. Man. It's, I think how, it's the eye. How long, how, how long was your lens for this one? 400? Uh, I might have been at 400. Let me look. Mm hmm. That's sharp, man. Yeah. Yo, it's it's right on the eye, man. Like, like yep. That is. Tap shop. You, you, you have to sell this one. Seven D Mark II, uh, two hundred and seventy eight millimeter. Yeah. Okay. ISO eight hundred. Yeah. One one thousand. Speed. Uh, yeah, one one thousand. Yeah. 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 Nice. Sharp, man. Yeah, we right. gotta we gotta get down there. Uh, yeah, oh, Andre, yeah. you ready to share? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, nice. nice. Fill the frame. Fill the frame. Yeah. Not totally. You have a little bit of space, but uh, this is what you can get underneath the uh, overpass. That's Hamilton, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Use what's there. I like the hat. That's yeah. an awesome hat. <laughs> it's a nice hat. The red blazer is nice, too. Yeah, it's a classic. Yeah, comp yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice the colors yeah. complements and the and the little bit of yeah. lines up on the top of the yeah. um, bridge also helps. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. You Good guys, shot, man. Good shot, man. Thank you. You guys know uh, Peter Hurley. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you know he uh, he preaches feel the frame and his headshots are very unique. He 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 cuts off the head like right right around here. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he, um, it's it's very hard to argue it with, with him because it's like he's carved a niche for himself. He's he's okay. in New York charging uh, eleven hundred dollars for a fifteen minute headshot, <laughs> and people send all these executives to him, and he's just click click click. He hardly edits his pictures, but he goes in, fills the frame, and cuts it right up there. So he said he did this shoot for uh, this big company with a very big <laughs> budget and then he sent the, the headshots and and then they uh they replied by they're like oh oh you cut off their heads we, we want you to bring them back with the <laughs> with, with the their hair heads. on we want to see their head. <laughs> don't you know who i am he's like have you seen my website have you? and then so they go on his website and they see all these celebrities with their heads cut off and they're like okay we love it <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice light in there. Thank you. Yeah. Soft yeah. large soft box and reflector. Yeah. Yeah. And when you fill the frame, you make the most of the sensor. Mm -hmm. It actually, yeah. you know, grabs, you know, all the information. On that mm -hmm. picture, mm -hmm. so uh, when you crop, you lose a lot of detail. Yeah, that's a good shot, man. Thanks. I like it. Just basic headshot. Basic. Eleven hundred dollars later, you're welcome. <laughs> you lost. There's half your head's missing, but you're welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not I'm charging eleven hundred yeah. for that. It's not yet. Yeah, yeah. Yet, he has many tricks up his sleeves. He uses continuous lights, these very, very bright lights, mm -hmm. and yeah. he puts them in this little window. And when the light, he lets the light hit their eyes for a few minutes, so their uh, pupils, you know, uh, it actually Shrink. looks really okay. good. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. See, we should get him. I remember when I, when I, um, I think when I first started initially, and I was looking for some tutorials, I came ac across. Uh, a video of his um the headshot tutorial section of his well, yeah, i think uh, everybody's probably watched one probably watch his <laughs> yeah yep yeah. i'll have to get him on the show next week let's do it uh, him, um, and him and mark robert makes him and mark robert hey makes, yes mark so, robert, yeah so. mark actually sent a reply i, I was i was sending to did he really i'll, I'll, I'll show you guys go. after the show there you go <laughs> <laughs> I think it was okay, probably so, an automated uh, message, though. 
Thank you for your response. Let, let me <laughs> let me share this last image and maybe this is oh, yeah. not edited yet. Um, it's from a shoot I did with Brian, okay. Mr. Brian, Brian James, yeah. a while back. Um, I haven't even edited it yet, but you know, fill in the frame, just mm -hmm. yep. kind of headshot style. Um, fill out the frame as much as That's you can. It's Brian go, in the chat. I edited it with what, one click AI. Let's go. Yeah, replace. <laughs> oh, let's, let's do it. So, <laughs> one click <laughs> AI. Let's go. Boom. Bring it up. Go to templates. Let's go. <laughs> let's go to it's happening, guys. There we go. <laughs> Portraits. Um, yeah. Let's take. Let's see. This one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right? Just there. Right. Just like that. Let's take this fade. one. I like the fitted one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, I said, Lumina, Lumina AI makes it easy. Uh, <laughs> and then you can easily just come back here to the edit and tweak whatever one you like, right? Hmm. So, Does it have AI I... to clear up uh, flyaway hairs? Um, mm -hmm. Not yet. I haven't seen that <laughs> one yet. <laughs> That's the worst. Brian. <laughs> yeah. That is the worst. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, you know, photographers are probably going to start yeah. going out of business when they start doing all that, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep, I know now they have the um, the sky replacement with the reflections. Mm -hmm. So if you have an image with the reflections, the latest update will replace the sky and make sure the reflections are natural too. Yeah, nice. so, it's crazy. Wow, it's yeah. absolutely crazy. Yeah. Quick nuts. Twenty years from All now, right. we'll, be, we'll be looking at pictures and we'll not know whether it was real or fake. Oh, you know? Or fake, yeah. <laughs> you fake skies. Yeah. Fake skies everywhere. You can't even tell. It's so easy to do now. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All right, guys. So, any um, last minute advice, uh, tips for composition? Learn the rules, treat them as suggestions, and break them often. Nice. Nice. Mic drop. Mic drop. Thanks, everyone, for jumping on. Yeah. Yeah, see, Andre did it. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys took away a couple of things. Just, you know, like I said earlier, just go out and practice, and things will come easier as you just keep practicing. So, And also have fun. Pretty basic, yeah. but, but also pretty important. Yeah, having fun is very important. <laughs> having fun is very important, especially in these crazy times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. Make sure you like this video. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. And um, yes, learn the rules and break them. In fact, break them more than you apply them. <laughs> and because Andre? I missed the beginning of the show, uh, just oh. quickly, because I missed the beginning, every single person on here has a YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to all of them. Yep, all the links are in the in the description. Everyone's YouTube, everyone's um, what do you call it? Instagram. Um, all the links are in the description. Make sure you check out everyone. Check out our work, right? Give us feedback um, and let us know how yeah. things are going. Andre, <laughs> any last words? Just just get out there and shoot. Uh, you have to train your eye. Uh, don't be too hard on yourself because we've all been there. So I'm yeah. at a point now where I can show you a shot I did from 2012 and not be embarrassed. Like that's yeah. when I started. So don't be embarrassed. Just go shoot, learn and have fun. That's it. Yep. And then we're in a digital age, right? You are not spending money on film. So practice, 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 right? <laughs> yeah. If you don't like it, delete them. But yeah. you got to keep practicing until you, you master that particular trick that you want to learn. All right. All right. So thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us this Wednesday night. Uh, like we always say, we are here because you guys are here. This is a community show. Um, your input, your your comments, and your you know thoughts are always welcomed. So let us know um, what you picked up today, what your strengths are today. Leave us a comment. Check us out on Instagram. Um, check oh, us sorry. out in the Facebook group, YouTube, and let us know, you know, something. Tell us something. Tell us how we're doing, right? Bye, Tony. Uh, if you have any inputs for the show as well, let us know. 
right? Like I said, it's a community show. Your input is always welcome. So if you have any topics you want us to cover, um, make the suggestions and we'll take a look and see how well we can accommodate those. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of the evening and we will see you next week on one of the other channels. Mine. Mine. <laughs> right, on Paul's channel. <laughs> I already won. <laughs> already planning. It's going to be a awesome. gong show. <laughs> Bye, guys. All right. See you later, guys. Yeah. See ya. Bye. Take care. Bye.